You may mock the idea of a Croatian supercar, but Rimac is already working with Koenigsegg and Aston Martin on their battery tech. It's a serious company, so serious that they make nearly every bit of this car themselves. Sat-nav, switchgear, headlamps, all in-house. Mm, apart from the leather, if you go for that, which is Bulgarian. Oh, I love Bulgarian leather. It's my favourite. But anyway, the reason I like the Aventador most is because it defines the supercar. It wasn't designed to do a billion round brands hatch. It was designed to do nine on Knightsbridge. It was designed to make people go, wow, and it does. If you want to go fast, buy a Ferrari. Or a Rimac. And that's for shaving your legs, if you're a lady. I love the Lamborghini as well, the styling especially, it's fantastic. But you know that the sort of time and thought that Lamborghini put into that, Honda put into things that they thought were important, like making a new type of steel section for that pillar so it can be smaller, so you can see out better. Ten radiators to cool the drivetrain and lots of other stuff that make modern technology simple to use. I just don't like it. Well, how is that relevant? I'm talking about it and I, I like, like it. I so I you're wrong. I wanted you're to irre... like it, but I don't. You're redundant. I didn't like I really wanted to like it. I've been 10 years looking forward to it. I wanted to like it. I got in it. I didn't like it. But it doesn't matter because I do. We chose to meet in the town of Zadar, next to its famous sea organ. Not realising that this wave-powered machine makes a terribly annoying noise. But I ploughed on regardless. This is an Audi TT RS, four-wheel drive, five-cylinder, turbocharged, two-and-a-half-litre engine, not to 60, three-and-a-half seconds. Really, you can think of it as a Nissan GTR in a Bauhaus baby grow suit. No, that's work. Hang on. Sorry, I normally think... Normally think of this before I get here. Hang on, it's a... It's a GTR with a well-groomed scrotum? No, that's... Before I'd had chance to come up with the right words, Richard Hammond arrived in an aerial nomad. This is an aerial nomad. I know, I've already said that in voiceover. Why, why didn't you bring a Porsche? It's... You could have brought that Porsche... What is it? The, oh, the new one. Can. No, the, the one that was the Cogster, but is now the 971. Uh, the 718. Yes, yes, that. Yeah. Why did yes, you bring that? Because I brought this. Nobody's going to say, should I buy an Audi or some scaffolding? I grant you, it's. Uh, no, because they're both. What? Cars. Are they the same price? No. Do they have the same performance? No. Are they for the same thing? No. As we argued about our mismatched cars, James arrived in an even more mismatched Lada Riva. Well, that's not going to work, is it? I mean, this is a Lada Riva. Right? We know, we've already said. I'm talking to the viewers. No, but they already know, don't they? I said it in voiceover. Good on it. You haven't said voiceover yet. I did. No, he has. He's done voiceover. Done voice he said mine in voiceover as well. This is whatever Jeremy said it was, and I paid just £800, which leaves me £1,200 for the all-important modifications, and that is plenty. Hey? What modifications? The modifications to turn it into a fire engine. We're going to turn them into fire engines. Who said anything about... I'm not... Well, You've got to turn your car into a fire engine using the money you haven't spent out of the budget on the car. I've I'm spent 800... I've just borrowed, from... I I just borrowed that from Audi. Exactly, I made a phone call. Can I borrow a Nomad? Well, if you don't turn it into a fire engine, you won't win the competition, will you? We're not in the competition to turn it into... You are in the competition! Not... James, we have tried time and again to think of a way that you could turn something into an amusing fire engine. Mm -hmm. It can't be done. No. The fire engine already exists. It's brilliant. Yes. It's already more compact than you'd expect, faster than you'd expect. You can fit the firemen in it and yes. the water. water. And they work very well. Exactly. That's the challenge. You're only saying you're not going to turn that into a fire engine because it's an air hostess car. It is not. It is have you checked the boot to make sure the luggage hasn't moved during the journey? Then our unscripted film got even more unscripted. I don't really care that he's going to um, well, uh, okay. <laughs> that's really up to yeah. you if it's a selfie. I mean, it's a bit awkward. If I do it, I'll get though, us all in. I'm, I'm better at this. I can well, get no, but the screen and get everybody in. Could, could it maybe wait? Flip the screen. There you go. Real. Come on, let's uh, do whatever we're doing. Doors to manual. Cross check. Okay. No air hostess jokes. Is that seat back upright? Where are we going? Well, let's just go. This is the point at which we we set off. We always do that. Chat, chat, chat. There'll be a line chat, of voiceover. Chat, chat. Okay. I'll put some voiceover in that says, hang on, it'll say, 
Since we weren't able to decide what we were doing, we all went in different directions. OK. Since we weren't able to decide what we were doing, we all went in different directions. I think the best car Jaguar ever made. The V8 supercharged XJR. It's cool without being cool Britannia. It's caddish without being laddish. It's violent without being vicious. And it is just the last word in sophistication. Hannibal Lecter had one, and I think that says it all, because the last we saw of him, he was on a plane, scot-free, eating a district attorney's head. Soon, I reached the meeting point where I found James, who'd bought an XK8 convertible. There we are, look. A big cat near an old dog. Greetings, mate. Moron. It's not a Subaru. You're supposed to be upholding the reputation of the Jag driver. Well, why have you bought that? Because it's excellent. It isn't. It is. No, this was a very poor Jaguar. No, this was a very good Jaguar. It wasn't. You could go camping in the wheel arches of it. Look, it was so high up. They looked all right when they were supercharged and lower, but this No, is... but they didn't work properly when they were supercharged it... and lower because they had a terrible ride. The one thing you get from a Jag is a nice ride. You're disconnected from the yes. world. That's the point. Anyway. And those wheels, what's the matter? Don't, there's no any way about it. That's the best Jag probably ever made. Mm. Well, it is. No. Tell me what's wrong with that. One of the wheels is odd. Yes, ah, right, I know exactly what's happened here. Uh -huh. Previous owners had a puncture. He simply borrowed a wheel from another car to use. And he's going to give it back? Of course he is. Yeah. Okay. Because he drives a jack. Exactly. And look in here. It looks as if there's been a knife fight in the car. That's because he went to stay with some friends, obviously, Thought, I'll borrow their cutlery, mm. tucked it into his trousers, and then he's cut his seat. I That's see. what's happened. At this point, Mr Hammond hoved into view. God, is that a Mark 10? That is a Mark 10. Oh. That's a, that's a that, properly villainous jag. That is a proper jag. Jag, oh, yes. Whatever you do, OK, do not tell him that. No, no. Hammond, you idiot. What? Well, we're supposed to be upholding the reputation of Jaguar. You've, you've brought an antique, you've brought an old piece of furniture. I am celebrating and revelling in the glories of Jaguar. This is 1967 420G. This is, a, this is, look at the, this front end started with this car. That's the Jaguar look, isn't it? The four headlamps, no, the narrow grille. No, but seriously, what is that? It's a 420G. This was the... No, no, not that. That. This was my jacket. I thought, you know, a bit of style or in Jaguars. There's no style in the jacket at all. This is riddled with style, mate. That is your, a... Some of your jackets are terrible, but I can't... Anyway, remember. this was favoured by every villainous bank robber and baddie in and around England in the 60s. And how much did you pay for it? Six and a half thousand pounds. What? I know. That is a lot of car for six and a half grand. Look at the size of it. Hammond, that is one thousand... No, wait, two thousand five hundred pounds more than I paid for a supercharged Jaguar. That is Jaguar's embarrassing attempt to recapture their own design that started with this, the four headlamps, the narrow grille. This is definitive. Your car is derivative. And Hammond wasn't finished there. Look at the size of this. Imagine how many oil paintings borrowed I could get in there. It smells terrible. Toolkit. Let me have a look. That's for opening windows. That is no. <laughs> this is this the, is the... not necessarily for fixing the car. <laughs> no, none of it. That's for cutting <laughs> through somebody's <laughs> fence. <laughs> this is for undoing the paintings from the walls. <laughs> All the Jaguar talking is just for buying <laughs> It's got Jemmy in it. <laughs> in fact, it's as real as the real ones from way back when. The chassis is made from a special steel called Reynolds 531. It's what they originally used to build the World War II Spitfire, and it's light, only weighs 39 kilograms. And then there's the body. The tooling and the technical drawings were all destroyed in the fire, 
so they had to scan an original from 1957 and then work backwards from that to make it in incredible detail, right down to the rivets, every one. The number and the position is as it was. And there's over 2,000 of them. But it was the engine that was the trickiest bit. The plans for that weren't destroyed in the fire, but I got a copy of them here. But there was a page missing. So they had to get an original engine and saw it in half to find out how it worked. No one has ever made a car like this before. It's a world first. So it's small wonder it's priced at just over one million pounds. Or for half a million pounds more, you could have one of these. It's an Aston Martin DB4 GT lightweight. And back in the late 50s, it was the fastest car in the world. Flat out, it would do 151 miles an hour. But this is not from the late 50s. Despite what you might think when you look at its period dashboard and its period six-cylinder twin-spark engine, it was actually built a few weeks ago. So, like Hammond's Jag, it's an old car that's brand spanking new. So, did these two ever race against each other in period? No, they did. They did. May 1960. I was a month old. I was ten years off being born, mate. Yeah, whatever. Picture of it here, look. Oh, look, there they are. Well, it's actually a D-type. Yeah, but that's it is... the race version. Yeah, exactly. DB4 GT lightweight. I mean, that was proper racing in those days. No stewards inquiries. Every no. time there was a bump, they'd just finish the race, have a drink, and then some sex. We should give it a bash. Oh, sex? No. no. Oh, I'd love one. Well, I'd, ra I'd rather have that than one of those. Is that the new Honda Civic Type the R? The new, new one, and it is hideous. It, it looks, is, honestly... It's worse than the last one. It's awful. I, I mean, the original 90s Civic oh, Type good. R was brilliant, but that is disgusting. It's revolting, is what it is. Mind you, it's not as revolting... What? ...as what's just got out of it. Oh, God. Why are you here? I'm here because I heard that you two were talking complete rubbish. You don't buy an old black and white television set. You don't buy a Bakelite telephone. Why would you buy an old car? Because they're new stylish. No, new stuff is better than old stuff. I've explained this to you before. The world now is better than it was just one minute ago. No, it isn't, because a minute ago, you weren't here. Yeah, that's true, and neither was that thing, and I do hate it. It is. That's it's one just... of the most revolting cars I've ever seen. You see, that's amazing. You're both talking rubbish again. To prove it, I suggested we take our cars for a simple evening drive. Be driving round it in this, the new Alfa Romeo Stelvio. There is no way in hell that I would buy one of these because the saloon on which it's based is faster, cheaper, more economical and nicer to drive. But if I had to have an SUV, this is what I'd choose. At this point, May arrived in the supercharged V6 Range Rover Velour. Well, you've done that wrong. No, I haven't. Mm. Look, in the first season of the Grand Tour, we did a big test of three large off-roaders. Yep. You had a Range Rover, and you went, you'd be mad not to have a Range Rover. The Range Rover's literally the best, so you can't now stand there and say that it isn't. What I meant when I said you've got it wrong, well, I meant two things. One, you picked the wrong one, you should have had an Alpha. And two, it's the wrong colour. I saw one of those in London the other day, and it was silver, and it's one of the best-looking cars I've ever seen. It is a very good-looking car, yes, I agree. Really good-looking. That's just hideous. That looks like it's got a glove box full of K and MDF and... What, building M materials? No, not M... What do I mean? What is it? I'm going to... MDMA. MDMA. Director knew that, weirdly. Anyway, never mind that. What that is is a Range Rover that sits between the Evoque... Yes. ..and the Range Rover Sport. Well, I thought the Disco sat there. No, that sits over to one side. No, the Discovery Sport sits between the Evoque 
and the Range Rover. No, wait. No, the Discovery Sport. No, hang on, you've got Evoke. Yes. Discovery Sport off to one side. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Why is it? Because that's the serious off-roady bit, not the it's luxury off-roady bit. serious. Before we had a chance to get to the bottom of Land Rover's very complicated lineup, Richard Hammond arrived in a Porsche McCann. Wow, Hammond, that is modern. Yeah, that's where you're wrong. He's making a habit of that. This is the new Porsche Macan Turbo Performance Pack. You get 40 horsepower more than the standard turbo, so it makes 434 of them in total. I'm sorry, 434? Yeah, in there, yes. And you managed to make it move? Why? 505. Italian right. horses. Which, let's face it, a flock of Italian horses could go from Shire to Shetland. These are German horses. They're How many talks? 442. 443. All oh, right, one more. Well, it's too many for a car on still. This isn't. It is it's very really high, high that, isn't it? What do you mean? Of course it's high. It looks like somebody startled it. <gasps> it's an SUV. 